Mm, it's the morning cryptos, or should I say it's the morning diptos. It's uh, a lot of stuff's down right now. I think it's the holiday, but let's look at it real quick. And then let's get on with goofing off for a couple of days, okay? So uh, start the music. All right, people, I wish I had good news to report here, but I don't think it's bad news. I just think it's this kind of inter-holiday thing that, as a newbie, I really didn't expect. Because I'm obsessed with this stuff. It just it just seems to me like, you know, the markets are letting a couple of dumb little holidays get in the way, you know? <laughs> but that's, that's kind of the way it is. When I'm obsessed with learning something, I don't take holidays. I just do it all the time. But I guess the world... The world needs a little break every once in a while. So um, we're going to look at stuff and see what's going on. And uh, let's go over here to the Bitcoin price. And uh, not a whole lot new from yesterday. I guess even reporters are taking a little time off. <laughs> uh, this is interesting on the Daily Express, whatever that is. Bitcoin price boost. Cryptocurrency here to stay even after predicted crash. Even after the crash that was predicted and happened, or after the crash that's coming. So let's let's look look at that real quick. And then Coindesk has it looks like an interesting article. Uh, Bitcoin price continues to fluctuate in its very volatile market, but considering the huge year it's had, the cryptocurrency is here to stay, according to tech investor Roger McNamee. So this is this is like a CNBC thing. Um, I just, you know, I I think they they're just full of crap usually. Um, so, and I have to tell you, I'm reading right now uh, the classic book, uh, the creature from Jekyll Island. I also ordered a book over the holidays um, about the Bilderberg Group. So I'm, I'm really looking into a lot of what uh, guys like Jeff Berwick have been talking about for years. Um, and uh, so I, I still think more than ever, the people of the world need to get their ass into cryptos just because they're not controlled by governments. And, uh, and just... I think governments are the most wasteful, mismanaged enterprises on the face of the earth. <laughs> and, um, and I want to do peer-to-peer -peer trading. I want to get rid of these exchanges and have there be a decentralized uh, exchange where we can just buy and sell with each other. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. And uh, I'm not techie, so I don't know how it would happen. But let's look at Mama Papa Bitcoin here. And so I drew a line and Bitcoin didn't listen to me for some reason. I don't know why. So we have to adjust the line, but it's not that big a deal. You know, it's really not. We had a huge boost and then we've had a correction over the holidays. That's really all that's going on. And, you know, these, these, uh, these news reporters want to make it seem like, you know, we've had a calamity. And you know why they want to make it sound like we've had a calamity. Because that gets people's attention. Because, again, people, this is the hypnosis of money. And I'm going to talk about this stuff. Our minds are hardwired. It's like, they're, we call them hooks. Right? Your mind, your unconscious mind gets hooked by bad news about, you know, some percentage point faster, easier, and more intensely than with good news, right? If there was a news channel that only featured good news, people probably wouldn't watch it. You know, it's the same reason we slow down on the highway to see an accident, right? Same reason people are fascinated by watching, uh, I don't know, some kind of an, exe an execution on Game of Thrones. You know, it's like we are 
strangely morbid little creatures and uh, something that's that goes awry is so much more interesting than something that's actually working. There's a lot of good news every day, all day, all over the world, but it doesn't get reported because, well, news is usually bad news. So just to kind of put all that into perspective, one of the things I highly suggest, and I, I started years ago myself, I realized whenever I watched the news, I would get up just kind of anxious. And so I stopped and all of a sudden my anxiety was a lot less lower, a lot lower, a lot less intense. So like it was at a 10, when I stopped watching the news, it dropped maybe to a seven or eight. Um, and that was a significant amount of relief. And uh, so when I started practicing hypnosis, I would literally say to my clients, do you watch the news? And most of the anxiety clients did. They were like news junkies. And I'm like, first of all, that's one thing you can do for yourself. Stop watching the news. And the only reason I look at any kind of news is just to see what what these people are saying what hypnosis are they spinning that you know is moving their agenda forward and there's a lot there's a lot of money in the world that would like cryptocurrencies to fail or at least would like to co-opt the cryptocurrencies and which is one of the reasons i've been a little suspicious of ripple um it's like Ripple, the cryptocurrency that's used by the most banks and that the banks have kind of adopted is doing really well right now, right? And why is Bitcoin totally and completely uh, unscalable, really, you know? And so you look into some of this stuff and you go, okay, there's some shenanigans going on. And for me, one of these cryptos or maybe multiple of these cryptos are going to be the ones that you and I use even in spite of whatever the government tries to ban or whatever the government tries to uh, stop. And the thing is, there's so many more of us than of them. And we've kind of hacked the idea. The idea is out there. The genie is out of the bottle. And they could ban, let's say, Bitcoin, but can they ban all of them? Like, how is that going to happen? And we can just make more of them, right? We could trade crypto kitties, right? That could be, you know, you could go to a store and say, do you take crypto kitties? And they'll go, yeah, we take crypto kitties. You know, it's just, it's going to change. Uh, and, and I think the people of the world will prevail. And so I wanted to take this moment with a little bit of a, a little bit of a down market this morning just to say you know what people this is temporary this too shall pass and after the holiday I think things are gonna heat up again so uh, in the meantime let's let's have a great weekend let's relax let's chill out uh, I'm gonna crank through these pretty quick uh, so and then let's get on with our weekend all right and let's 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 not look at these for a couple of days right let's chill and relax Nothing you could do about it anyway. Not a good place to sell. Don't don't sell into a dip, right? <laughs> this is if you got any any cash to flash, look for a place to to get in. We want to buy the dips, buy low, sell high, people. And you can't sell high if there's never any lows, right? And you can't get in on a dip if there are no dips. So this is perfect uh, for for someone who knows what they're doing. And as I said yesterday, I don't always know what I'm doing. I'm new to this, and I'm learning on camera. I'm learning in front of you. But the thing that I can bring to the table is years and years of experience with mastering my own mind and being aware of how my own childhood crap, my thoughts, my beliefs, my attitudes, my perceptions um, affect Oh, I, how I perceive the world or how I interact with the world. So all that being said, let's, uh, let's grind through these and see what's going on. Obviously, Bitcoin is kind of down. Uh, and it's, it's down almost as much as it was uh, a week ago when things really took a tumble. And so who knows, right? Who knows? And if you want to have a little bit more technical trading experience, uh, check out Datadash. Uh, Nicholas over on Datadash, he's, he really seems to know what he's talking about. 
And again, don't take his word for gospel either, because we're all humans here. And if we all knew what was going to happen next, well, it wouldn't really be a market, would it? So just remember, whenever the crowd is going in one direction, consider going in the other direction, uh, or at least selling hot dogs to the crowd, right? So that's, <laughs> that's all. That's my preamble. Let's grind into it. Let's go. Just right down the line here, uh, Bitcoin Cash has dipped below my little line, right? But we still may be working into a sideways channel. We don't know. This is a, a one-day chart, and I'm going to kind of stick with the one-day charts here. Uh, and then we have Bitcoin again, and then we have Bitcoin Gold. This is where I got in, so I'm not in the money now, but it was holding. It was holding pretty well. So... Uh, and the bottom line is it has come down to, you know, support. This is, this is okay. This is, let me have to adjust this here. So, you know, we've come down to some support. Big deal. Okay. <laughs> right. Again, <clears throat> the, what I like about this is I tend to be impatient. I tend to get in early. I always arrive places early, right? Some people are always late. Um, I got in here, and it seemed to me like that was a good spot to get in. But look, there's an even better spot to get in. And one of the things I do like about the markets, particularly when they're doing sideways channels, is that you almost always have a second chance to get in at a good price. So again, the main discipline, the main thing I've learned is you do not want to chase a rising market, right? You always want to buy the dips, and how do you know it's a dip, right? Well, and how do you know it's as far down as it's going to go? You don't, for one thing. But secondly, that's why I'm looking at these places of support. If we have you know a ton of support at a certain level, and I guess this is kind of 219-ish, 219, 220-ish, um, you know, maybe even 200 is the actual hard line of support, you know, maybe it's really right here. Um, wherever the big evens are often tends to be support, but again, not everybody's looking at a US dollar chart. So, um, so, so it's approximate. So there's some support and we'll see if it continues and we'll just get rid of this line here because, you know, that's really the reality is you know, maybe maybe there's a new line to be drawn. You know, and that's not bad. It's still up, right? It's still up. And it's young. So we'll see. All right. Anyway, <coughs> let's grain throw these. Dash, we had a nice big dip in Dash. You know, and again, we have to adjust. We have to adjust our minds a little bit. Maybe... Maybe Dash has come down to some support here. Let's see. Oh, look, there's some support. This little guy here, right? And this was a sideways trading range, right? And that's one place you could have gotten in. And the thing is, if you're a holder, you're going to get in here and you're going to hold for a year, let's say. And, and this is going to be a tiny little blip. But if you are a trader... You want to get it on these little sideways things, and then you want to get out, right? And another little piece that that I've learned as well, and that a number of my buddies have learned, is that you're not going to make all the money you could have made all the time, right? You're not going to make all the money you could have made all the time. You're going to make some really good moves, and you're going to make some moves that don't work out so well. And you're going to make some moves that you're going to go, oh, why did I do that, right? But that whole act of going, oh, why did I do that? You want to turn that into a learning and a valuable experience. It's tuition you've paid to learn something, right? And it may be something you've learned about yourself. Oh, I always get pulled in. You know, I get pulled in by the, uh, the bear trap or I get pulled in by the bull trap or I get pulled in by you know, the enthusiasm of the market, and I think it's just going to keep going up, right? Well, nothing keeps going up, and this reprieve, this break, this holiday uh, time is the perfect time to kind of chill, 
and go, okay, let's see where it goes. And to me, the things that are coming down to support, okay, let's see where it goes from here, right? Um, EOS against Ethereum, a little bit down. I'm trying to just stick with the US dollar charts for now for these EOS against US dollar. Same deal. It's just the same thing we've had ourselves a dip. And the question is, if it hangs on in this channel, we're all good, right? If it keeps going down after this, stop. There we go. Okay. Very good. Um, you know, if it keeps going down after this, we'll see. But again, you know, the, uh, the volume is down a little bit here. Um, you know, and you want to look at the, if the trend is your friend, where is this trend? You know, the trend is kind of here. I mean, you can draw it in lots of different ways, but you know, where is the trend? And so this is, it's just kind of a pause. It's, it's, and I've said it before, I'll, I'll stop repeating myself. <laughs> uh, Ethereum Classic, I'm just keeping an eye on it. Same deal. It's all, it's just the same thing with all of these pretty much today. All right. And we have support. It's come down to support. Okay. That's encouraging. It's encouraging. It hasn't gone to zero, right? <laughs> and we're just adjusting. That's Ethereum against the US dollar. Uh, let's look at IOTA. Same deal. Just same thing. Nothing going on. Just some selling. Some little depressing news. <laughs> Litecoin really got clobbered here. And uh, good time to get some Litecoin. Or maybe not, right? Who knows? All right, Neo. Neo was actually kind of up a little bit, but it it dipped back just like all the others. And we say go, same deal. But notice, you know, in we say go, the bottoms are still a little bit higher than they were. Quantum. Quantum wasn't looking too bad. Uh, it was up and now it, it's pulled back. So, XMR Monero. Oh, same deal. It's popping back. Sorry I'm doing this fast, but what else can I tell you guys? Now, Ripple. Ripple's like the one project that I watched that was totally different. But even Ripple could not sustain its big boost and has pulled back. So, if you thought you'd missed the train... <laughs> There's almost always another chance to get on the train. And, you know, you can make money from 20 cents to a dollar. You can make money from a dollar to two dollars. You can make money from two dollars to four dollars. You can make money from four dollars to ten dollars, on and on and on. So no matter what, we're going to be able to take, make money here. And the, the key is this is experience. And in the future, I'm going to be very, very careful approaching major global holidays like Christmas and New Year's. Um, maybe Easter and Passover, but it's really Christmas and New Year's. That's it. You know, not every country has a 4th of July. Not every country has a Labor Day weekend, but there are global holidays like Christmas and New Year's that seem to really affect things. So anyway, this is Zcash against Bitcoin. Let's just look at Zcash against the US dollar and the same thing happened. Now, when Zcash was dropping on the, what, when, when was this? This was the, the 22nd of December, which was just last, a week ago, right? A week ago, Thursday or Friday, something like that. Um, I was like, oh man, I really want to get some Zcash. I'd been reading up on that project and I, I was liking it a lot. And I was like, ooh, this could be my moment to get some. And look at this, it's, it's a significant amount of the way back, right? And, and who knows, we may, <clears throat> we may have, you know, 
the market may continue from here. We don't know. All right. So that's some of the kind of discouraging news, if you could call it discouraging. But again, in your mind, if you just know it's temporary, if you know it's just the holidays, if you know it's it's just kind of a breath before the next big push, you wouldn't interpret it as discouraging. You'd be like, oh, you know what? This would be a good day to go out and play. And it's snowing right now. I'm like, I want to go out and play. I want to go get outside. I want to move my body. I want to just kind of clear my head. And it might be a good day to do that. So, again, that's in your mind. Let's go to um, Cardano against Bitcoin. This is good. You know, this is really good. But, again, it couldn't sustain going all the way up. But it's early in this project, and this, to me, is a project that could totally and completely eradicate all the problems with Bitcoin. And we'll see if it can do it or not. Um, and basic attention token against Bitcoin. Basic attention token. Not bad. Kind of hanging in there. Not a lot of uh, energy here either, but there's hope, people. There's some good stuff going on. Let's see what else I can find here. Let's looking fairly decent. Uh, Civic, not bad. It had a nice big boost a couple of days ago. Um, and of course it came back because there's just no oomph. There's no energy right now in the market like we were seeing. Uh, Einsteinium kind of took a hit. I'm keeping an eye on Einsteinium. <laughs> it was really boosting like all the rest. And that's the thing. That's why you got to take profits when we have these big boosts. If you want to lock in profits, you got to do it. If you're a long-term holder, then just hold and, and don't worry about it. Don't look at it. You know, come back in in half a year and see how much you've you've improved. But we are looking at it every day, so <clears throat> we want to do it without obsessing or without grasping or without getting discouraged or depressed or overly exuberant either. Um, this is. <clears throat> This is a little project I've been keeping an eye on. I don't even know what the hell it does. Uh, Richard Hart mentioned that it was something that he was uh, he was liking a lot, um, but it's pretty expensive and it's a little out of my uh, price range. Um, I'm keeping an eye on Lisk. These are just some of the things that I'm just kind of looking at. Monaco against Bitcoin, kind of holding its own against Bitcoin. Uh, we had, we already looked at Neo, NXT, it's one of the ones I look at, and we had a big boost, and the Caterpillar just came right back down to the branch, right? So some of these boosts, you know, you gotta, you gotta get your profit while you got it, right? And others, you just gotta hang on long term, it all depends on your approach. 10x, 10x is kind of choppy, but I, I'm encouraged by that. I mean, it's it's kind of holding its own. And what else? We've already looked at quantum. How about salt? Salt was doing really well the other day. Uh, and I have a little bit of salt, and it's, uh, you know, it boosted and, and came back like everything else. So, see a coin, something else I'm watching. Here's against uh, Ethereum. And waves against Bitcoin. Yeah. So that's it, people. That's all. I mean, there's others, but I think that's enough. <laughs> so not an exciting update, but really time for reflection. Look back at how much you didn't know at this time last year, right? Look back at, like, this time last year, I was really kind of depressed over all my credit card debt, over all the things I'd tried to do that didn't work out. <clears throat> and I started really working on changing my limiting beliefs around money. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I started watching documentary after documentary about money, about the history of money. I watched Mike Maloney's uh, seven-part series called The Hidden Secrets of Money. Um, I started watching documentaries about Bitcoin. I started listening to people like um, Andreas Antonopoulos. Uh, I started reading everything I could. And uh, about February, 
I believe it was February, I made my first purchase of Bitcoin and I bought literally $20 worth. That's all I could afford. And then I started buying just $20 a day. Um, and I said, you know what? I need to tax myself. I've never been able to save money because I've never put myself first. You gotta pay yourself first. So I want you to just kind of meditate on that a little bit, people. How can you pay yourself first even more in the coming year? And how can you begin to think of yourself as someone who is really, really good with money? And that does not mean you're not going to learn, right? You're going to learn. <clears throat> and nobody knows everything. And these markets are kind of a new level playing field that you can get into with very little capital. And you can begin to build your financial future. So that's it for today. Happy New Year, everybody. I will see you guys next year. Tomorrow is Sunday, and I usually take Sunday off, <coughs> and uh, I may even take Monday off, uh, and if things are just kind of plumping along like this, I probably will take Monday off, take a couple of days, and uh, then I will be back, and uh, I will see you in the new year, and uh, be safe, people, be smart, keep learning, and love yourselves, do something kind and wonderful for yourself and uh, kind of lock in the profits of your mind, the things you've learned this year, the things that have improved this year, and forget about the stuff that isn't awesome, okay? And focus only on what you truly, truly want, what you truly long for in your heart of hearts. Not what you think would be nice to have, but what you truly want. For me, it's freedom to do exactly what I want, what I want, where I want, how I want, with whom I want. And did I say when I want? Pretty much all of that. So thanks so much. Let's start the music. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, grooviness, over and out. <laughs>